Sup guys, welcome to A1 in a Box. This video is kind of long, so I made a table of contents for you guys so you guys can skip ahead and watch wherever you guys want to start. First, I'm going to start off with a review over the new MacBook Pro. Then I'm going to move on to a size comparison between this year's model and last year's model. Then I'll show the FPS in League of Legends on last year's model and this year's model. And then to top it off, I'll share my final thoughts and conclusion. MacBook Pros are known for their build quality, and this year's model is no exception. It's no surprise now, USB-C's have taken over this device, and you get four of them and a headphone jack, and that's it. Obviously, the main feature of this year's model is the touch bar. Even though I've had it only for like three days, it hasn't really revolutionized the way I use the device. I can be as efficient with using the touch bar as I can using the trackpad, which is now huge. It definitely is a cool feature, but to me, it doesn't really add much more efficiency when using the MacBook. As time goes on, maybe I'll use it more efficiently, but right now, I just use it for volume control and brightness. It is cool that you can customize the touch bar with new hotkeys, but it's only limited to what Apple can give you, which is totally an Apple move. So I bet many of you guys do watch a lot of YouTube videos and a touch bar does adjust accordingly. So you can scrub and pause wherever you want, but it's not as accurate as using the trackpad and cursor. Talking about the trackpad, it is huge. It goes from the right option key all the way to the left command key. And honestly, I'm sorry to say, this is probably my favorite part of the new MacBook Pro. It makes navigating the cursor so much easier and you just have so much room to work with. Now I didn't think I would like the new keyboard, but after just a couple of days of use, I actually prefer this one over the old keyboard. It feels really good when typing on it and you don't have to worry about accidentally pressing the trackpad with your palm. I've actually tried to press the trackpad with my palm on purpose and it just doesn't click so you don't have to worry about that. Adding Touch ID to the MacBook Pro was a very smart idea and it works just like you would expect it to. So my final thoughts are that if you have money to spend, I'm not going to stop you, go ahead and buy it. It is a beautiful machine. But if you were to ask me if it's worth it to upgrade from last year's model, I would probably say no. Unless you're going to be using Final Cut Pro or any of the programs they mentioned in the keynote, then I would probably just stick with last year's model. The big selling point I thought was how the touch bar was integrated within the programs they mentioned such as Final Cut Pro or Photoshop. So basically you're paying like an extra thousand dollars or more just for a touch ID and a larger trackpad because the buttons on the touch bar are just touchscreen rather than physical keyboards from last year. Don't get me wrong, it is cool that it's touchscreen and it changes from application to application, but it doesn't make you more efficient than using the trackpad. So now we're going to move on to the size comparison between last year's model and this year's model. So as you can see, it is about a pinky's width smaller from the side and pinky's width on top. Now I'm going to bring in last year's 13 inch model and see the size comparison. And as you can see, Obviously the 13 inch is smaller, but the new 15 inch isn't ginormous compared to it. Obviously all the ports and USBs are going to be totally different. And now you do have to charge the USB-C instead of the MagSafe. So comparing the thickness from last year's 15 inch and this year's 15 inch, you can see that it is thinner and it's probably thinner by the top lid from last year's MacBook Pro. So here are some Geekbench tests that I ran. I don't really know exactly what all these means, but I can see that last year's multi-core score was higher than this year's multi-core score, which is kind of surprising. So here are the specs of my MacBook this year, and here are the specs from last year's model. So the only game I play is League of Legends, and so all these settings were the same for both devices and I did a custom game with the same bots and I used the same champ on both MacBooks. Now this is the new MacBook Pro and as you can see the FPS starts at over 200 and as the minions come in and other champ does fall below 200 and it seems like it averages around 150 or so. As I'm farming the FPS seems to hover around 130 to 150 in that range. So far it seems really smooth but we'll see once we get into the team fights. 
so this is on last year's macbook pro and as you can see i start off below 200 around the 140 range so as i'm approaching the minions and other champ comes into play the fps does drop below 100 as you can see so there is already an improvement from last year's model and this year's model but that doesn't mean that it's unplayable on last year's model and my gameplay isn't hindered at all so you definitely don't want to be lagging during team fights so here it is on the new macbook pro and as you can see the fps drops down to around 46 but then it picks back up to around 90 fps so on last year's model i couldn't get the bots to do a 5v5 so here is the closest i had so it does drop to around 46 and it's consistently around 80 or so after the team fight one thing I did notice while playing is in last year's model, the fan is really loud, but in this year's model, the fan is actually pretty quiet. So in conclusion, I think that there are two categories that people will fall into when buying the new MacBook Pro. There will be other factors probably, but this is just what I think. So first, if you have extra money to spend, then I mean, go ahead, I'm not going to stop you. Secondly, if you use programs such as Final Cut Pro or Photoshop heavily or any of the programs mentioned in the keynote then I would probably recommend upgrading to the new MacBook Pro. Now on the other hand if you don't fall into any of those two categories then I would highly recommend just going with last year's model because honestly the touch bar is cool but it's not really a game changer and you can save yourself at least a thousand dollars while having similar performances from this year's model. So there's my review and thoughts on the new MacBook Pro. Hopefully I helped you guys make a decision on which MacBook to get, but only you can decide which is best fit for your financial lane. If you guys enjoyed this video or has helped you, please hit that like button and subscribe if you can. And till next time, peace.